busy in the cellar. Show me your hands, will I? They're dirty. Yes. They're dirty, but they're clever. They can shake the leather like no other man's that ever came into the shop. Who taught you, will they? Well, oh, Miss Maggie, I learnt my trade here. Hobson's never taught you to make boots the way you do. I had no other teacher. I need have none. You're a natural born genius in making boots. It's a bit of a natural fool at all else. I'm not much good at upper leather, and that's a fact. When are you going to leave Hobson's? Leave Hobson's? But I thought I'd go satisfaction. Don't you want to leave? Well, me? I've been in Hobson's all my life, and I'm not for leaving till I'm made. I said you were a fool. Yeah, I'm an oil fool. Don't you want to get on, Will Mossop? You heard what Mrs. Hepworth said. You know the wages you get, and you know the wages that make like you could get. In one of the big shops in Manchester. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be fear of going them fine places. What keeps you here? <laughs> is it the people? I don't know what it is. I'm um, used to being here. Do you know what keeps this business on its legs? Two things. One's the good boots that you make that sell themselves. The other's the bad boots that other people make. And I sell. We're a pair, Will Mossop. You're a wonder in the shop, Miss Maggie. And you're a marvel in the workshop. <clears throat> well? Well what? It seems to me to point one way. Well, why is that? You're leaving me to do the work, my lad. I'll be getting back to my soul. You'll go when I've done with you. I've watched you for a long time now. And everything I've seen, I've liked. I think you'll do for me. In what way, Miss Maggie? Well, must have been my man. Six months I've counted on you, and it's got to come out sometime. But I never I said... I thought you'd never. No one been left to me to do the job like this. I'll... I'll... sit down. <laughs> I'm feeling queer like... <gasps> what does what me for? To invest in. You're a business idea in the shape of a man. I've got no head for business at all. But I have. My brain in your hands make a work in partnership. Partnership? Oh, that's a different thing. I thought you were asking me to wedge you. I am. <gasps> well, by gum. Are you a master's daughter? Maybe that's why we must. Maybe I've had enough of father and you're as different from him as any man I know. But it's a bit awkward, like... Oh. <clears throat> and you don't help me any, lad. What's awkward about it? You talking to me like this? I'll tell you something, Will. It's a poor sort of woman who'll stay lazy when she sees the best chance something from her. The self of life. It's too near the bone to lose things for fear of speaking out. I'm your best chance. You are that, Will? <laughs> well, by gum, <laughs> I never thought of this. Think of it now. I am doing. Oh, no, the blows a bit too sudden to think very clear. Uh, I have a great respect for you, Miss Maggie. You're a shapely body, and you're a masterpiece at selling a shop, but when it comes to marrying, I'm bound to tell you that I'm not in love with you. Wait till you're asked. I want your hand in mine, you work with it. You go through life with me first, best as we can get out of it. We don't give much with that. There's love between us, lass. I have a love, all right. Well, I've not. And that's honest. We'll get along without. You're desperate sin on this. It's a puzzle of me always. What does your father say? He'll say a lot when he can say it. It'll make no difference to me. Well, try to not upset him. It's not worthwhile. I'm judge of that. You're going to wed me, Will. Oh. No, I'm not. Really, I can't do that. Maggie, I can see that I'm disturbing your arrangements, like. But I'll be obliged if you put this notion from When me. I make arrangements, my lad, they're not made for upsetting. What makes this all desperate awkward is that I'm talking. <laughs> You're what? I'm talking to Ada Figgins. Then you'll get loose and quick. Who's Ada Figgins? Do I know her? I'm a lodger and a mother's. <clears throat> the scheming Jose. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that sandy girl who brings her dinner. She's golden-haired, is Ada? I. Oh. 
she'll be here soon. And so shall I. I'll have trouble with Ada, I've seen her, I know the breed. Ada's a helpless soul. She needs protecting. That's how she got you, was it? Yes. I can see her clinging round your neck until you fancied you were strong. But I'll tell you this, my lad, it's a desperate poor kind of woman who'll look for protection to the likes of you. Ada does. And that gives me away to her. She's more to meekness, Ada is. You wear her and you'll be an 18 shilling a week bootmaker for the rest of your life. You'll be a slave. And a contented slave. I'm not ambitious that I know of. No. But you're going to be, I'll see to that. <laughs> You've got my work cut out for me. I wish you'd leave me alone. About you. So does the fly with the spider catch them. You're my man, William or something. Aye. So you say Ada would tell another story, though. Come along, do I tell you, Will? Oh, no. Well, then I am. 
Yes. Oh, I couldn't. 